So the topic that you wanted to talk about, yeah. how to be a ready buyer in this market, right? Really, really critical. And we've been um, talking with our team, other agents, but but mainly with our team and, and making sure that buyers have the expectation of what this current market is like, because it's really unlike any other market we've seen in, in the sense that it's super competitive, when you know homes come on the market that are that are you know fit for a lot of people, um, you know not every home is selling, no doubt. Right, still got to be priced properly, right? For the condition and location, exactly. Yep, it's got to be priced right. And, but what happens is, you know, if it's a good home in a good area with, you know, and it's it's priced quote to the market what do buyers need to be thinking about so that they're ready to go and their yeah. they, they, their offer is competitive because you know we've had some that had 20 offers in the first day on the market right well we put one on the market today i think it's had 20 showings already yeah you know two hundred thousand house so, so we'll have you know multiple offers so what what's going to set aside uh, yeah. who's going to be the one selected by the seller to buy that home yeah that's the question yeah what you know how what does that buyer need to have in place to make sure other than having a real estate agent and this is critical that's helping them put that offer together that understands what this market is like i've heard some stories recently of offers that come in you're going what offer are you writing this market for right yeah, I heard. I'm sorry. I'm. I keep talking. I keep asking you a question. I keep talking. But I got to tell you this story. I heard. I heard this the other day. Super competitive. Somebody received an offer on a property. Right. It was one of those. You know, two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty. You know, real competitive. Knew there was going to be multiple offers. Or actually, this agent knew there were going to be multiple offers. But they wrote this offer like they were writing it in 2010 when it was a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Right. And, and, you know, they, they put all these expenses on the seller. They didn't, you know, it, was, it was just weird. It's like, hold on, you're, you know, the real estate agents should know that are doing business in this market. They got to, they got to talk to their buyers about this if they want to be competitive. For sure. And also we do what our buyers want so we can educate them. And then, then we sometimes write things that we know are not how you're going to be the person that gets to purchase that home, right? But but I think, you know, having a, a realtor who is familiar with what's going to be important to the seller. And honestly, Tigo, one of the most important things that we find in what we team, train the team is have a lot of communication with the other realtor because we need to find out what's important to the seller, right? If I have a buyer who can do a different closing date, they don't have to have the house by a certain date, right? Right. If I don't call the other realtor and find out what what the seller prefers, when when would they like to close? When do they need to move? I might pick a date that puts me out of the running, right? So that communication with the uh, realtor representing the seller is exceptionally important. But there's lots of different things, you know, that we do to write a comp compelling offer, but we do need the buyer to be ready, right? So what are those things that buyer needs to do? So they need to be working with a good local lender. You know, um, these days, you know, online lenders have gotten so good these days, but an online lender is not going to wow the seller or the seller's realtor, right? They want somebody that lives here, has a reputation here. And if they mess up the loan, other realtors know about it. And, you know, they have a reputation, right? So a good local lender. And then a lender letter that goes with their offer that shows that their credit has already been pulled, their um, verification of employment, their prop their taxes have already been submitted. They've already done all the legwork on the loan to make sure that this person really qualifies. Can make a side note on that? Because there's, there's the pre-qualification letter or the pre-approved letter, right? In in pre-qualification means they told me these things yeah. and if they're all true, they probably qualify for that house. Right. We're pre-approved. And that's not always true. I've it seen depends letters on the letter. Say, I've seen letters that say pre-approved and then you read the detail and it's, it's, well, we haven't Based pulled on, their credit yet. We haven't looked at their employment history and this and that. Right. So, so you want to get, get again, one of those letters where the, the, if, if you're the buyer, you're actually made the application You've already submitted had them pull your credit. You've already submitted some of the, you know, the the very basic documentation like your income, your proof of income, that type of stuff, job history, and so on. Right. Right. So getting pre-approved versus uh, 
pre-qualified is pretty important. And then obviously the type of loan is very important. Yep. If you need down payment assistance and somebody else doesn't, they're probably going to choose the somebody else, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the time it takes you to get your loan. So some loans notoriously take 45 to 60 days, where some others could close in 30 days. And it again, it just kind of depends on what the seller's interested in and, and how that works. So, so let, give us just like maybe one or two of those little tricks. We don't want to share all our secrets, but give us a couple tricks that, that maybe a buyer could offer to the seller to make their offer stand out. Well, you know, other than the price, right? Other than price. Yeah. So an escalation clause on the price. So if you're willing to pay more for it, make sure you put that down, right? Make sure you put it out there because if the other uh, seller or, or the seller's agent doesn't know that you're willing to compete at a price higher than you offer, you yeah. may not be given the opportunity. Um, you know, th some of the things, just who pays for what it's typical in our market you know, kind of who pays for what. There's title cheat sheets that show who typically pays. So sometimes offering to pay some of the things that a seller might. Honestly, I think you get more bang for your buck by giving a higher price and keeping the who pays for what the same because the customary, the, you know, the psychological of the value and what you're offering as a higher price, I think gets the attention of people more than, than what the net might be sometimes. Um, and then lots of other things, but just making yeah, sure you write, say, you know, we've got a whole ba bag of tricks, you know, that, that we've, we've deployed over the years. And well, and, we talk about it regularly. Yeah. What are we seeing? We're asking our lenders, what yeah. are you seeing come through on contracts that you think made the difference? Right. right. And again, I think a lot of it is just communication with the other agent and making sure that they want to work with you and that they, that they know that you have a good reputation. So.